Hello future doctors, my name is Michi, the Canadian IMG, and in this video I just want to talk about the surgery shelf as well as the surgery core and how I, uh, what resources I use as, as well as how I performed well in it in general. So, the difference between surgery and the other cores, maybe a little bit similar to OB, is that you're not going to have a lot of time to study. Um, surgery, you're going to be waking up at early hours and you're going to be going to bed at, uh, you know, pretty early as well. And you're going to be busy maybe throughout the day depending on what type of team you're on and how busy the hospital you're at. So the main struggle with surgery is that you have to force yourself to study every day or as much as you can whenever possible. And uh, you know that's the biggest struggle with it. But as long as if you force yourself to study um, but it's productive studying, then you can perform well. And So what I mean by productive studying is that let's say you're doing a UVO question and you get really frustrated at the answer and you're basically skimming over the explanation and you're not really looking at um, you know why you went wrong and you didn't really spend too much time on it um, that's maybe time to stop take a break you know take a nap or something and hit back the questions later on and read the explanations properly see I know that because I've done that personally and you know you get frustrated and you find yourself really not learning from the questions as you're supposed to so, for the resources, obviously, again, we're going to start off with um, UROL. UROL, there's around, I think, 250 or two, maybe around, maybe maximum 300 questions for surgery. Um, there aren't a lot. So, what you want to do for surgery is that it involves a lot of internal medicine. So, after you've done the surgery questions, I would do the GI, the pulmonary, as well as the renal, I think, systems for um, UROL in internal medicine section. And um, if you have taken internal medicine before this and you already hit those um, questions, then that's not necessary. But if surgery is your first core then uh, and you have the time, I would definitely hit those questions, especially the GI section because GI is the majority. GI and I think pulmonology are the majority uh, for the surgery shelf as well as, you know, in the hospital in general. So you did the UVL questions and now you want to do some Zanke Step 2 flashcards. Um, I highly recommend this. Again, this is based off the UVL questions and it's really good to hammer down those details or those silly stuff that you, you just have to memorize for no reason. Okay, after that, I have online med ed videos. Again, I did not like online. I don't like online med as much as other people. It's, you know, gives you a good general idea of what's going on, but it's not really good for the shelf. Uh, it's a little bit more helpful for, for in real life if you're talking to residents and you want to have an idea what's going on. Um, so, for example, let's say you're going to be starting off with um, maybe the vascular service on Monday and you don't have any clue of what's going to happen, what your surgery is going to be like, what you're going to get tested on, then maybe you can look up an online med ed video. Um, there, our school personally offers a really good resource where you can look at surgery videos being done and they take you through the different uh, layers of the muscle that you're going to be going through. So if you are going to get pimped in the surgery and you know these muscles, that's a great resource for you. Um, after that, I have this very excellent resource. Uh, this is a textbook, the Virgilio. I put five stars beside it because not a lot of people know about this. And this is a textbook that's like case-based, but it's not really like other, uh, not like case files or anything like that. It's a very good resource, especially if you haven't taken internal medicine before. It's a very easy read, but there is a lot in the book. So I would recommend starting this off on your first day of surgery, honestly. And, you know, try and space it out so that you're going to be doing all the chapters by the time you're done or even have a good look over the chapters multiple times before you're done. And they also have questions at the end uh, of each chapter where they want to test your knowledge. So, you know, they have a section on, let's say, breast. You know, they want to talk about, you know, breast surgery, when you do surgery, when you do radiation, when you do, do chemo after the surgery. So, you know, surgery isn't always um, just focused on the surgery aspect. You're going to know, do you give chemo? Do you give radiation? Um, how do you biopsy it? When do you biopsy? When do you send them for more um, testing? So that's a really good resource. So I would always recommend that textbook. And I will, um, you know, have a picture up here or either and send some links down in the description box if you guys want to look it up. After that, this is a resource that everybody knows about, the Pistanas. Pistanas is all high yield information. Um, it's just really focused on hammering down those details and just, um, it's good for a you know, very fast review before your shelf, but I wouldn't heavily rely on it to make sure you do well. 
Um, so yeah, you want to really work on you know your textbook, your UWorld, and other resources, and use Pistanas as mainly like a brief refresher before the show. And then finally, I have the Amboss Question Bank. So I talked about this before. It's a newer question bank compared to Kaplan and USMLE RX. Um, I personally like it, but I haven't really tried Kaplan or USMLE RX for step two. Um, but again, you want to do these after you've already done Google, Zenki, um, you cover your textbook material, and then when you have time, hit up these AMBOSS questions. And like internal medicine and other clinicals, there are um, practice um, exams available online. So you want to do those space throughout. Now, surgery generally is harder than, uh, it's one of the more tougher ones. So just have an idea of how you're going to be doing, what do you need to work on, and um, exactly how you need to improve. So that's about the, it for the shelf. It's a lot of information. But again, the main point that I want to emphasize is that that textbook, the Virgilio, is very good. And I think everybody should be reading it um, before going into their shelf. Okay, so for the core itself, um, the main thing about surgery core is that it's a very um, tiring and the fact that you're working, you're waking up early, you're going to sleep pretty early, um, you don't really have a lot of time to yourself, there's a lot of work to be done, you're in between cases all the time and you're not, uh, you might not be able to, you know, relax a lot during that time period. So the main thing I want to say is that keep a level, um, keep level headed, um, you know, just face everything logically. Um, try and um, spread out the work in between all the students so that not no one person is stuck with all the surgeries and some other person um, is doing basically nothing so that everybody has an equal share and if somebody wants to do surgery and somebody wants to do more surgeries of course uh, you guys can do that or if you want to do more surgeries yourself take that upon yourself but um, I would just recommend uh, sp spreading out the surgery load um, equivalently okay and um, that's pretty much it. So just look up information before the cases. Look at the anatomy if you want to. Um, if you do get pimped in the cases, um, so you have an idea why you're doing a surgery, what's going to happen, what's the post-op, pre-op complications, and those type of things. So that's pretty much it for surgery shelf and core. I hope you guys all do well, and I will be making more videos as I go throughout my third year, as well as my fourth year. All right, all the best wishes, and I hope you all do well. Bye-bye.